to the shelter last night, 14 and a half miles. We're heading out in the morning. There were a ton of people there we didn't video. There probably were about 20 tents, I think. Not very many people stayed actually in the shelter, but it was just a ton of people. water yesterday all day. There's plenty of water here. Looks like bears have been chewing on these logs or something. Look at that. Are beavers? I don't think there's any beavers up here. Oh good, uphill. <laughs> Warm us up. It's pretty chilly this morning. Today is easy. Right now it is at least. We had to go up, but now we're on like an old logging road and it's pretty flat. There aren't very many rocks and just leafy. We can get some miles in doing this. And later today, there is an outfitter right on trail that serves burgers and stuff. Um, so we're probably gonna get there around one or two o'clock in the afternoon just in time for lunch. I don't really need a resupply and I don't know if Linda really needs to resupply either much. So I doubt if we'll buy a lot of food or anything there, but it'll be nice to have a hot burger. A really fresh bear poop. Not even any leaves or debris in that one. It's just shiny. But we don't see him. We'd like to.
We're on switchbacks. <laughs> We're on our second climb of the day, about four miles in or so. It's pretty gentle though, there's switchbacks. So it's not bad. If we went down to a parking lot, which was a pretty steep downhill, and now since we went downhill, we go back uphill. <laughs> It's still cool this morning. I think it was in the 40s when we woke up, and it's in the 50s now, but it's supposed to get up to in the 70s this afternoon. So we wanna get as much hiking done as we can before it gets too hot. And then we'll slow down. So what does it actually feel like to hike the AT now that I've gone a quarter of a way? It's exhausting, it's tiring, and it's painful. But what makes it exciting for me is I like the physical challenge. This other than the challenge is just the views and the beauty out here. I mean, there's no other way to see it than to hike it. Most of these areas you can't reach by car. You may be able to day, day hike into some of them, but a lot of them you can't without backpacking. You can't see these things. The sun rises, the sun sets. Everything is just so beautiful. And the different seasons. I'm really looking forward to the different seasons. And sharing it all is a big motivation too. I've always enjoyed travel logs. Love watching the Travel Channel. And when I was a kid, my parents would take me to a high school once a month where they'd have um, travel logs and people would come in and they'd share their travel stories and travel pictures. So I've always enjoyed traveling and that sort of thing. So to be able to do that myself and to save it for myself and my family and my friends and show them some of the sites that they'd never see if they didn't hike it, to me is a lot of fun. And it's really relaxing to get in my tent at night and edit the videos and look back at all the amazing things I saw that day. It just makes a really positive, nice end to the day because I'm, I'm always astounded when I get back and I've got so much video and so many beautiful things that I saw. So it's a real positive way to end the night, editing the video from the day before or the day of. <laughs> and you just see, go back and relive it all and you know, all the pretty things that you saw. You know, it is very physically challenging. At first we start out with eight miles and eight miles were hard. At the end of the day, our feet hurt, our ankles hurt, our knees hurt, our backs hurt, <laughs> and we were physically completely exhausted and drained. It was all we could do to fix our food. And some nights we didn't fix food. We just made a wrap and went to sleep. <laughs> we didn't cook anything and you know, set up our tents or whatever. And sometimes we stay in a shelter because we were just too tired to set up our tents. And then gradually your body gets used to it a little bit and you start adding miles because uh, you can't stay going eight miles a day. You won't make it in time before they close Katahdin for the winter. So you have to up your miles. So gradually after a few weeks, we upped our miles a mile or two at a time. Now we're doing about 14 miles a day. And about, at about, for me, about 12 miles in, I am exhausted already. <laughs> Those last two miles are hard, unless the terrain's been really easy. And then sometimes we can get in 17 or 18 miles. But same thing, ankles hurt, knees hurt, feet hurt. And as we've, you know, up the miles, we have more blisters. 
I have, I think, three right now. Just on one foot, just on my right foot, because that seems to be the, hill, the downhill side on the trail for whatever reason, so your foot kind of slides sideways in your shoes sometimes. So I tend to get blisters on that foot, but it took a while before I even got my first blister. It wasn't, I think, until our first 15 mile day that I got a blister, which was quite a ways in. So that's good that I haven't had more because some people have them all over the both feet constantly. So I've been pretty lucky. It's pretty much just like you think. You would know, think about walking as far as you physically are able to and then some every single day and you kind of know how you feel. It's kind of funny to watch all the hikers when we get into camp, you know, sit down as fast as we can and uh, then when it's really hard to get up we all get up and move around like we're 80 or 90 years old. <laughs> and it's all about experiences in life. You don't remember the day-to-day -day stuff. You remember the things you experience, the places you go, and things you do outside of the ordinary. And I get to walk through some of those beautiful places in God's creation. And I get to drink out of waterfalls. <laughs> I get to do so many amazing things. I get to see sunrises and sunsets. I get to see birds and animals in their natural habitats. I get to listen to the birds sing. It's just amazing to be out here. And I remind myself of that at the end of the day when I'm 12 miles in and I'm exhausted and wrecked. <laughs> and I don't think I can go the next two or four miles. And that keeps me going. So many people my age can't physically do this. And most of the people who physically could do it can't for other reasons. So I'm really lucky that I'm able to do this. That I can do this. That I'm physically able to do it at 59 years old. So I'm one of a few thousand people in the world that's doing that this this year. Only 25% of the people will finish. A very, very small percentage get as far as I am now. So most people that um, are going to quit have already quit. I mean, some will have to quit because of injuries or other things or, you know, emergencies or something down the road. But, and I'm the only one that sees the things that I see out of all those people. Even if you walk past the same point a few minutes later, you may not see that squirrel or that chipmunk. You may miss the flower if you're not looking down at the right angle. You may not see the bear. And nobody sees the same things anyway or notices the same things. So this is a unique experience. Just one person will have.
looks like we're coming up to what might be another view. Kind of through the trees. I bet we'll get a better one later. I can hear voices. <laughs> People ahead of me on the trail probably. Or maybe coming up from town down below or a farm. I st think I still have about three miles to go before we get to the road crossing where the outfitter is. The trail has been easy today in comparison. I mean, there's been some ups and downs, but it's mostly leafy, pretty easy to walk on, not a lot of rocks like yesterday. That really slows you down because every step can be an ankle turner. When the rocks move, you have to go so slow. And you can't walk very fast because you're walk, you know, watching where you walk and every step has to be just right. But today is a lot faster. It is just noon, I think, and probably less than three miles to go to get to the outfitter and lunch, and then we'll go on as far as we want to from there, depending on how long we stay there. We could easily get in quite a few miles today, because I think it's 11 just to get there from where we started at Jenkins Shelter this morning. Okay, I finally found a view for you. I also found Linda. She's been a little ahead of me. She had a lot of energy this morning. Isn't that beautiful? Ooh. Oh, and Linda had some really bad news for me too. The hamburger joint is closed on Saturdays? Today's Saturday. Who's closed on Saturday? But anyway, they're closed. We might have a consolation prize, though. Some folks may take us to get us burgers. So that would be awesome. But I'm so disappointed. We've been hiking all day trying to get there to get a burger. Who's closed on Saturday? <laughs> this is bizarre. And during hiker season, I know all the hikers were planning to go there. And there were like 20 at our campsite, 20 tents. Um, where we stayed last night and all those people are headed this direction planning to get food just bizarre that they're closed on saturday during you know high hiker season i mean we're in the bubble now where all the hikers are Got a snake. Really pretty. He's beautiful. Look at him. He's long too. He's like four or five feet probably. So harmless black snake. One of the good ones. That's our first snake we've seen on trail so far. Came out under some power lines. We're walking a little road walk right now. Wow. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? There's the highway down there. Hiking along a road, still on the AT. We did pass that trail shop and it was indeed closed. We double checked, sadly.
a guy who had a car here, a hiker that had a car here, offered to take us to a diner here. So we ended up getting pastas. Oh my gosh. Desserts, appetizers, fried pickles. It was so good. We're so full. Moving a little slowly, but we're getting a few more miles and I think we were close to 13. And now we're trying to pick up a few more. Since we got to sit down and rest this afternoon, let and eat. And it's only like four o'clock, so we still have some hours of daylight to do. And he dropped us back off at the trail. It was so nice. And we're doing a hill up out of the parking lot with full bellies and a full water carry because the next water source is one mile, but it's a long ways off the trail. Then it's over eight miles to the next water source. And we're probably gonna camp somewhere in between. This is hanging on a tree under some leaves. Little yellow flowers, tiny. I'm trying to put in just a few more miles before we make camp, since we got a nice rest at the diner. And we feel pretty good other than just being overly full and stuffed with all the food. Oh look, what a cute little campsite. And you know what's even cooler about it? It's ours, our tents are set up. We're ready to go to bed. There's a view on both sides. We're kind of on a little ridge. No storms in the future tonight. Just a light breeze, very nice. A little bit of a view on both sides.